Will man live? My wife caught me cheating, Reddit stories. The whole contents of her wardrobe have been packed. While some of the clothes were intended to be donated to Goodwill, a non-profit, others were planned to be sold at a yard sale. Diana's clothes were with my sister, who thought she could sell them. My sister thought she could get the clothes sold. When it came to figuring out where most of Diana's belongings were, I let her have it her way. Some of the things that I chose to save as keepsakes were ones that were really valuable financially or that were particularly meaningful to my mother and me. These things meant a lot to us both, therefore I decided to keep them. She gave off an air of vulture behavior, intent on getting her hands on all of Diana's priceless jewelry and artwork. She was her own worst enemy, my sister. She was aware of it. I had to almost take them from of her hands, even though I will generally hold on to items that remind me of my wife and help me cope with her absence. Oh, how I wish it were her. I can't help but want her at my side the entire night. I miss our sexual encounters together, as well as our morning and evening meals together. I miss her everyday lunches too. I certainly am looking forward to that very much. Diana is the name I went by in my life. She made every single day into an adventure that was worthwhile. When it came to food, sex, clothes, or anything else that made me feel content and at ease, she never fell short of my expectations. As long as you didn't get the wrong idea about what was going on, the scenario worked out well for us both. She really went above and above to help me. I tried to accommodate every single one of her whims and demands. She was my soulmate in every aspect, we worked as a team and as a pair and were always together. However, it is also true that Plato would concur with this evaluation. I showered her with jewelry during our time together, including many pieces that were exact replicas of the ones I had to keep out of my sister's greedy hands. I took care to purchase her things that fit within our budget, I brought her to the most fancy places, and I made sure that the holidays we had were of the highest caliber. To answer your question, the truth is that this young woman had the ability to dream. She finally lost track of my comfort, though, and I was completely unconscious that I was hurting. She eventually lost sight of my comfort in spite of this. She is no longer here at this particular time. I'm selling everything that we have, including the artwork and furniture, except for the items I've chosen to keep as keepsakes while I'm cleaning out the house. Everything else about the house is for sale. Actually, the house is too horrible to live in since it serves as a constant reminder of the death that took place in my bedroom, right under my bed. This is beyond my ability to put up with. Without the love of my life, I'm not sure how I could possibly stay here in this place. She wasn't done being mad at me even though her mother was here today. She holds me accountable for Diana's absence, the deaths that occurred, and the carnage that occurred, as if I had orchestrated it, as if I desired it. Oh no, I tried to convey to her the scope of the numbers that. I told Diana that she was the love of my life, and that I was completely in love with her, but she did not believe me. These were memories, if not of our love for one other, then at least of our life together up to that moment. I was Diana's family. I can reminisce about Diana in all the beauty of our love as I see these displays. It's a pleasant experience that reminds me of good times. My mother-in-law asked for Diana's jewelry, or rather the pieces she inherited from her two grandparents, so I suppose I should say that she was taken aback. She stated that these were jewels from the family. Diana's family, on the other hand, was me. Greetings, Mom Diana's mother had always been my mother because I had lost mine. This was a result of my own mother passing away. Even when she requested that I cease calling her by that term, my sentiments of animosity were increased by the fact that I kept thinking of her in that way. These were the only things I had left for my kid that have sentimental value, so you just kept them. Max, that's the only reason you kept them. My mother thought that the things that I bought for my wife were cheap junk. In response, I said that Diana wore the items I got her every day and that she loved them. Diana's mother-in-law looked at her with a look of disapproval, and you just retain everything she owned to aggravate me. Because of the threats from solicitors and the litigation that have been filed, you would rather that I say nothing on her behalf. Following my mother-in-law's departure, I carried on with my packing. My sister was packing boxes, so I started by looking through them and then went back to get the stuff she had tried to sneak out of the house. She tried to take only the priciest items that Diana had, which proves that my sister had excellent judgment in clothing. A few months ago, my family and I attended a funeral. 
The relatives of the person we were honoring did not want us there, but they all held me responsible for our attendance. It was my mother who placed the blame on me. They believed that I was the only one who could be blamed. It is possible that there was a better way for me to handle it. Conversely, when I was in love, I was completely unaware of the bad things that might have happened. It's said that when someone is in love, they can achieve anything they set their minds to. Stated differently, you are totally blind to the fact that not everything that occurs in the world is amazing. It is untrue to say that people in love are impervious to the most trying circumstances. I even suggested that her father attempt to strangle me, and her mother begin beating me, even though I had pledged to cover the cost of Max Weller's beloved's headstone inscription. It was so disgusting to her family that I even proposed that her mother start hitting me. This led to the other members of the family making an attempt to join us, and I was lucky enough to escape with only minor wounds. Even at this instant, I am still responsible for looking after her family. Her persistent behavior doesn't seem to be stopping any time soon, based on the threats she has sent. I am getting ready to go at this precise moment. I was prepared to leave everything behind and run into the night, away from both her family and her relatives. All of the things that belonged to my wife were sold in addition to the house. That was the exact time I was going to give up on everything. I went to the cemetery as I was leaving town to pay my last farewell, to the folks who had passed away there. I had hoped to find an inscription honoring Max Weller on the headstone, but sadly it was not there. It was where I had expected it to be. To put it briefly, it was said that Julie Crum died in 2022, a death that was far too soon. I started crying a little since I had no idea that Diana would be coming home on that specific day, and I told Julie again how sorry I was that I had been unaware of it. I was incredibly devoted to both my wife and the intern I worked with. I felt a great deal for both of them. I decided it would be a good idea to spend the night in my bed at home with the person I greatly care about, even if Diana was not supposed to be in town that specific evening. Everything was going great until my wife came in and shot my mistress nine times with my Glock. Everything was going incredibly well at that point. It seemed like a sensible suggestion to me. I currently don't have either of them left, Diana was sent to one of the state's correctional facilities, while Julie moved on to the next life. I know that if Diana would just talk to me, we would all be happy together, even if both of my families despise me and think I'm responsible for everything. I firmly believe that this is the case. When my wife was acting like this, was it really my fault that she was so furious and unhinged? If you want to be sure that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you, you should subscribe to our channel. Since the narrative that comes after this one is completely different from the one you are currently listening to, you should also make it a point to listen to that one as well. If you are under 18, you really should not even consider listening to the one that is going to be offered to you.